So what I did was, is I set aside a whole day to be querying day. It was going to be, I just set it aside on my calendar. That's all I was going to do that day. I was going to finalize my materials and I was going to send out some query letters. And that was going to be the whole, the whole day I'd set it aside. Um, and then I had to, uh, it turned out I had to rebuild my website, uh, which, uh, you know, uh, pretty, really put a kink in that plan. And then, um, I actually ended up doing some, uh, remote work for my day job as well. And then during that, uh, Photoshop sort of crashed my laptop where I had all my materials open that I was working on that day. And, uh, th then my laptop blue screened completely and, and then it wouldn't come back on. Uh, and I, I think that was, I guess the, the universe telling me that that wasn't the day of reckoning the, the promise today that I would be sending out query letters that that was this definitely, definitely not the day. Um, and then I, uh, I, I lost my, my hard drive on that computer. Um, I, I took it in and they had it for about a week at the computer repair place. And my hard drive was indeed, uh, was indeed corrupted completely and I needed a new one. <laughs> so, uh, then I got a new brand spanking new hard drive in my laptop. Thank goodness I didn't need an entirely new laptop, which was, a uh, at least one, one shining moment, but, um, I had lost my hard drive. Now, of course, <laughs> thank God I had my work backed up. Uh, I didn't, I didn't have like the last two days of edits and things like that. Um, but I didn't, I did, I did have the rest of course, because I am paranoid about these kinds of things because it's happened to me before. And so I do have my writing backed up on lots of little, um, uh, you know, USB sticks hidden around the house, like an Easter egg hunt. Um, so I have several copies at any time. In fact, I actually always travel with the USB stick with my most important files. Um, when it comes to like writing my books, um, or like my edit, my notes, things like that. I keep those on a USB stick that I actually just keep with me no matter where I am at work, in the car. A anytime I have one of those on me because uh, I'm that paranoid about it. Um, if I lost my book, I think I would literally, <laughs> you know, lose it. So uh, luckily I had all that backed up, but this is just a disclaimer to let you all know that uh, you need to go back up your stuff uh, right now. Uh, so if you don't have your, you know, creative work, uh, your pictures you like, whatever, whatever your stuff is on your computer, if you don't have that backed up, you need to go do that right now. Uh, that's just, this is just my, uh, a note from me to you here <laughs> and, uh, you need, you need to go back up your stuff. So, um, yeah. Now, of course this did set me back a little bit, but before I get into how and when and all the details of how I actually queried, uh, or sent my first few query letters, at least let's talk about a few things first and get a few things straight. How, how do you get a book published anyway? Um, and first you have to write a book. Now I know this can take some time and it's a bit hard. I've done it, uh, you know, at least once now. And, uh, but you're gonna have to write a book first. So there, there's that. And then you are going to get a literary agent, hopefully. And that's why you, you have to query, which we'll talk about in a second, but you're going to get yourself a literary agent who is the one who then uh, gets you hopefully a book deal and connects you with a publishing company, a publisher. And then the publisher is the one who makes and markets your book, uh, for you since they, they've invested in it. They want to make sure it does well. And they help um, connect you with, of course, booksellers who then sell your book to readers who are, in my opinion, the best part about this whole equation, because there is nothing like people who have read your work and liked it. It's just, um, it's pretty magical. So uh, I think they're probably my favorite part of this process. But then again, there's so many of these things that I haven't experienced yet, and I can't wait to find out what it's really like. Uh, but this is the traditional publishing process here. Uh, of course, self-publishing is quite different. But uh, at this current time, I'm not interested in self-publishing. I'm interested in traditional publishing. So this is, uh, as far as I know, the process that I will be hoping to go through ASAP. Here we, here we are, you know? Now, what is a query letter anyway? Well, according to Wikipedia, a, a query letter is a formal letter sent to magazine editors, literary agents, and sometimes publishing houses or companies. Writers write query letters to propose writing ideas. The query letter is an author's first step towards getting his, her, their manuscript published. So what was my process like in writing my query letters? Well, first thing you want to do is going to, you're going to want to read all of Query Shark, which is an excellent blog by, by a literary ed, uh, agent who obviously knows what they're talking about. So you got to read all of Query Shark and that'll, that'll really prime you for what you should be and shouldn't be doing. Uh, and then you're going to want to go ahead and write uh, your query letter. Uh, it's not easy, but uh, give it a go. And then uh, then you're going to have to be uh, too afraid for several months to do anything else after that, uh, which is good because that sets you up to then have some time off before you revise your query letter, uh, which, you know, of course, you're going to come back to it and be like, what? And revise all of that. Uh, and then you're going to have your computer crash. Um, oh, wait, no, that, that's probably just me. Uh, so uh, hopefully you can skip this step. 
Uh, and then you're going to stay up till about like 2 a.m. looking for typos before you actually send any letters. Uh, you could have sent the motor out 7 p.m., but you're just going to have to read uh, everything 80,000 times to make sure there's no typos. Uh, you know, hopefully you have a friend who can assist you in this, but uh, I, I didn't. So uh, I just had to rely on me and I don't trust me very uh, much. And then finally, you're going to submit those letters and send those emails, um, which is just terrifying, really, uh, just, just terrifying. The scariest part of all this is my fear of simple mistakes, typos or missing a detail of, of certain agents' requirements being the thing that gets me an automatic rejection. We all make typos and just because we may make little mistakes typing or grammar mistakes doesn't mean that we can't be great storytellers. And my greatest fear remains typos, not rejection. Firstly, because I know that even great and successful authors get rejections before they get agents. And secondly, because no matter what happens, I freaking love my book. Like, even now, on the 142,000th edit through, I still give myself goosebumps reading certain parts. I love it. And one should probably love their own art at least, right? So that's good. And thirdly, the feedback from my beta readers is like having a superpower or something when it comes to fending off the sting of rejection. The positive feedback from readers is like armor. I know there are other people out there, like at least four of them-ish, but still, who like this book. If they like it, and a few seem to really like it, then there will be others out there who like it too. I just have to find one agent who will give this book a chance. I just need one agent who loves it the way that I do. There are many, many literary agents in this world, and I will keep trying. But I know I will get rejections first, and I did in fact think it would really hurt. But you know what? When I received this very first rejection letter, I was literally talking with someone who is currently reading my book, we were talking about the story in that very moment, when that email pinged through onto my phone, and getting that first rejection felt like something to almost celebrate in that moment. Because here was this reader in the middle of telling me all about how they had loved the last chapter they'd read, and nothing, not even my very first rejection letter, could hope to knock me down from that kind of high. People loving your work must be addictive. And sure, I'm positive you can OD on that kind of thing and get into a dangerous, overinflated headspace. But I'll be damned if it doesn't help having someone tell you how much they liked your work while you receive news someone else doesn't even want to give it a chance. And if this first round comes to nothing, and the rest come back form rejections like these first two, well, I'm going to keep going. I'll change my query letter a little bit, of course, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll keep going. I'm going to fight to get my work published, to have this story out there, because even if all the agents say, no thanks, I've already got readers saying more please. And I know whose voice is loudest, which one matters most to me of all. And it isn't even those lovely, obviously highly intelligent, perfect in, <clears throat> in every way beta readers uh, of mine. It's my own heart saying, don't worry, you've got this. And not even the fear of typos can compete with that. No rejection, no review, no one saying no thanks can take away how I feel about this work. How it has changed me. How it has saved me. How it still does. So keep it coming. I can take it. And I'll keep writing. <laughs>